Welcome and welcome back. Today I want to talk about Tony Evans. Uh, Tony Evans was the senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Texas. He, as of last Sunday, today's June the 11th, as of last 2024, he stepped down from his position. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some background that may be relevant. He did not specify why, exactly why. He just said it was an old sin. He, he classified it as an old sin. Um, and biblically, biblically speaking, I'll tell you right now, there's no such thing. What that translates to me is a sin that was not addressed by him previously, but for whatever reason, he chooses to deal with it now and still has not confessed it. Confess your sins one to another. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's still an unconfessed sin. It is not a repentant sin, but more on that in just a second. Recently, uh, Dr. Tony Evans remarried his previous wife, Lois, uh, for 49 years, and they had four children. She died of cancer at the end of 2019. Tony remarried to a woman by the name of Carla. At the time, her name was Carla Crummings, and I want to spell it right so you know who I'm talking about. C-R-U-M-M-I-E. Her husband was an assistant pastor at the same church as Tony. He was one of Tony's assistant pastors. He died of a heart attack in 2020. In 2020, Lois, Dr. Evans' wife, died in 2019. In 2024, the associate pastor who died of cancer, his wife, and Tony Evans got married. So after making this statement uh, last Sunday, it leaves a lot of questions because the statement was simply put as he's stepping down, there's old sin, he's going through the process within the church, He's just going to be like everyone else sitting in the pews. Basically, I give you an overview. I recently, uh, as I was asking the Lord, seeking the Lord about uh, this video, I came across, I came across a podcast from him. He does podcast. He's a huge mega church. It's a mega church. He even has Bibles which he has his name attached to it in some way or another. How he associates that, that's that's on him. I don't have one of his Bibles. Um, I just read the regular Bible, King James Version. I don't know whose name is attached to it per se. Um, but he has two Bibles and he's written numerous books. And he is a mega church pastor as well. So um, I came across this podcast and I thought it was quite interesting. Now, the only thing about, I'm going to read one paragraph, his opening paragraph to it. And the rest, of the, it's a story we all know. It's about the woman who was dragged before Jesus as in the act of committing adultery. The woman, not the man. So this is his opening paragraph to that. And this is one of his podcasts, which can be found on his link, which I will link below. So he says, I am sure that many, most, if not all, particularly if you have lived for a while, know what it is to, to have lost your dignity. And let me mention this. The title of this is called Case Dismissed. That's the name of the podcast, Case Dismissed. And have lost your dignity to have done something for which you are ashamed, that you regret. This is him speaking. And perhaps it's, it's not only something in the past, but something from the past that stays with you. Because shame has a way of hanging out, hanging around with our regrets where we have failed and faulted and you want your dignity back. In John chapter eight, we have a court case and we've been talking about 
the fact that God does his business with us in a legal setting. Jesus has gone to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he comes again, verse 2, to the temple, and all the people were coming to him. Jesus has a drawn crowd, and he sat down, and he began to teach. And this is when um, <clears throat> they brought the woman to him. Now, going into the podcast, I'm not going to read the whole podcast. In his opinion, he says, he says that the man is not guilty in this scenario. Whoever this woman was having adultery with, that man is not guilty. He was only there as a setup for Jesus. I'm just telling you what he said in his his podcast. I found that very interesting. And I found it very interesting that he said that uh, something for which you are ashamed that you regret. And it keeps hanging around. Again, he did not specify why he was stepping down. He did say it's not something illegal. So my question is illegal in whose terms? Because if he had read his Bible, and I presume that it's the same, because God says, do not change, not one word. So illegal by whose terms? By the world's terms or by God's terms? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So this, of course, to me, brings to mind P. Diddy, Sean Combs, whatever. Because they want to make a statement before whatever it is that is approaching becomes evident to try and soften the blow of it. So as I was seeking the Lord about this, <clears throat> this scenario came in my mind. This pictorial scenario came in my mind, and I'll describe it to you. And it's something that either you've been in it or you've seen somebody in it. So picture this. You have two people. <clears throat> One person did something. One person is in a d disciplinary position, be it a police officer, be it a parent, be it a teacher, whomever. So the one person who did something did not necessarily confess to what they did, but it becomes common knowledge. So now this person wants to stop whatever is headed their way as a form of punishment, judgment, what have you. So they tend to run in front of that, be it a person who, the parent who's gonna get whatever, the switch, the belt, the whatever it is that they're using, because, you know, parents use, did use the, the shoe, the shoe, the chuck club. Whatever it is that they're about to discipline that child with. And the child is trying to explain why they don't think they should get this whooping. They wanna to explain to the parent, it wasn't illegal. They want to downgrade it. They want to water it down. They want to categorize it. And in my opinion, he stepped down as a pastor because whatever it is that is the sin is highly expected of him not to do as a pastor in his religious position. So, oh, you can't say, well, I'm commoner now. You can't say anything to me. God's judgment is God's judgment. So now I'm going to say this. Whatever is done in the dark will come to the light. And you cannot be sorry for something just before someone else finds out about it or just as someone else or the general public is finding. That's not the time to be sorry. Repentance is confessing, especially when you know what you did. You know what you did. So however long this old, how old this sin is, at the time that it happened, just as people say about P. Diddy, at the time that it happened, that's when you come forward and you say, I, got, I have issues, I need to step down, I need to stop doing, I need to step back for a minute, I need help. I need to clean this up. I've made a mess, I need to clean this up. And I'm not in a position to be an authority and in, 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 in the public eye. He didn't do that. It's an old sin. There's no such thing as an old sin. It's an unrepented sin. So at the time that it happened, he should have come forward. The fact that he's not 
said anything about it for however amount of time, and I'm sure this is all gonna come to the light, however amount of time this has been, since he said he was, <clears throat> he made a moral decision, a bad moral decision is what he called it. Since it's been time since he's made this decision and he has not come forward, do you think it's just, no, it bears fruit. It's been bearing fruit the whole time. And that fruit is gonna show. It's painful to admit to God when we have sinned, it is painful. I don't find it easy. I don't find it easy coming to God and say, God, ugh. Mm, mm. I don't find it easy. But I find it much harder to have, I, I personally can't have that weight on me for any amount of time. I make it a habit, I'm not better than anybody else. <clears throat> Excuse me, I make it a habit to repent on a regular because I may have thought something, I might have looked at somebody in such a way, I really would have gotten myself into trouble because we cannot have a hateful heart. We have to have a forgiving heart. I may have said some things in my mind, shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have thought that. But to not come to God at the time of the sin and repent of it and to let it fester. When David became king, and he's on the rooftop because you know they had the little garden apartments back then. And his wife, Solomon's mother, because Solomon is David's child, second child, he saw this woman bathing on the rooftop. And he lusted after this woman. He thought she was just the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. Problem, she was married. She was married, but David was king of the battlefield. <clears throat> so he commissioned her husband to be in the front lines of the next battle and he got killed. It was a plan, it was a murderous plan. And then he took his wife. Their first child was birthed but was ill. And David prayed and repented and repented and repented. And God still took that child. It's better to repent at the time of the sin than for it to be old sin. And I do not think for a second this is the last of this. There will be more. Be blessed.